everyone, it's me, Katie Beth again. And just a little pre-adventure history about Juan Pollo, which is the restaurant we're going to today. It's mostly a Southern California restaurant, and it has the best example I've ever heard of someone being able to take criticism or suggestions and really run with them. So the restaurant's owner and founder, Albert Okura, when he was younger, worked at a lot of fast food restaurants. For instance, he worked at Del Taco and Burger King, so he really knew the fast food ins and outs. And while he was working at one of these restaurants, an El Pollo Loco opened up across the street from where he was, and he said, huh, that's a good idea. I think I'll open up a chicken joint. So when he was 32 years old, he ventured out to open a chicken restaurant. And originally he wanted to make grilled chicken, kind of like El Pollo Loco did. But he talked it over with his friend, Armand Para, who was from Mexico. And Armand said, hey, look, this location that you're looking at in Ontario, California, isn't really big enough to do a bunch of grills. So maybe do a rotisserie chicken, like they kind of do back where I'm from. And instead of saying, oh, hold up, this is my restaurant, I know what I'm doing. Albert was like, huh. You know, that's a good idea. And he took that suggestion and really rolled with it. His friend Armand also helped with making their signature sauce that they marinate the chicken in. So there was a little a bit of a joint effort there. What I also like about Albert Okra a lot is that not only does he take the suggestions, he doesn't hide that they were suggestions from other people. And when people help him, he also doesn't hide that. He's like, yeah, they gave me this cool suggestion and I used it and it was super helpful. So he gives credit where credit is due. It's really cool about him. So in 1984, they opened up the first Juan Pollo in Ontario, California. And in 1986, they opened up their second location in San Bernardino. So their first location in Ontario, California no longer exists. We're going to visit their second location in San Bernardino today. just had one pollo. It was Jason's first time eating there. What'd you think? It was really good. I had the <clears throat> half chicken and my sides were rice and beans. It comes with corn or flour tortillas and you can make little burritos if you want. But the chicken was really tasty, good marinade. And I also got two chicken tacos, pretty average shredded chicken, lettuce, tomato, Tacos. I did really like that their hot sauce or their salsa they give you. If you ask for hot, it is actually pretty hot, pretty spicy. Huh. So I like that it. says something because Jason really likes hot stuff, and most do. places don't have it hot enough for him. Usually not. They also give free refills. We found out when I went back to get my soda, and we went back and got these. They're called cinnamon cinnamon crisps but my mom would make them when I was little and called them pililis. I guess she completely made up that name because I internet searched it and it's not a real thing. But they're basically mm. these just she made smaller pieces. But it's basically flour tortilla dough rolled in cinnamon sugar and they're delicious. Well we had a great time at Juan Pollo. So before today, I'd only been to the Juan Pollos in Orange County, and this one was a lot bigger and had like meeting rooms that looked like you could donate. The guy Where on the clock. No, no, no. We were trying to wait to finish filming for him to leave, but he just keeps riding that quad around in the background. San Bernardino. <laughs> what are you gonna do, San Bernardino? <laughs> 
So in 1998, Albert Okra also bought the original location of the very first McDonald's, which was also in San Bernardino, California. And if you check back at last week's video, we did a little special on the first McDonald's, the first location, which was the museum that we went to, and the longest running McDonald's, which was in Downing, California. So if you check back at last week's video, you'll get some more information on that. But again, in 1998, Albert Okara did buy the original location of the original McDonald's, and he got it in a foreclosure sale for $135,000. Now, my research says initially he didn't plan to make a McDonald's museum, but after he purchased the property, a reporter misreported that he was going to make a McDonald's museum, and again, he was like, <laughs> that's a terrific idea, let's do it. And so now we have that cute little McDonald's museum in San Bernardino, California, thanks to Albert Okara. Aside from the McDonald's Museum, there's also the Route 66 Museum that he created that's attached to the Juan Pollo that we just went to. And Albert Okara is also one of the biggest contributors to restoring Route 66 and having that as a travel location again. And along those lines, another suggestion that he took, Albert Okara also bought an entire town. He was talking to his real estate agent one day and his real estate agent was like, you know, I really regret not buying a town when I had the opportunity to. And Albert Okoro was like, you know what? That's a great idea. I'll take that town, please. And he bought the town of Amboy, California in 2005, which I guess at the time you could buy an entire town for $425,000. In Southern California, I can't even buy a house for that. So again, Albert Okara was a really good businessman, really good at taking suggestions and giving people credit for them. And he made some pretty good chicken. Come on up here. You see all the different accolades and things here. Things that uh, Mr. Okura has accumulated over the years. Juan Playa has been around since 1984. Started in Ontario, California. This is Mr. Okura's little uh, sanctum sanctorum. You'll see him and his brother-in-law when they started. Albert's background is already in fast food. And these are some of the early checks and things. And this right here is a little wall of shame. These are all competitors. <laughs> People have tried to imitate what he's done and not succeed it. Sometimes they're so brazen that they even try to copy our advertising and wow. confuse the public. And these are all trophies that Mr. Okura has gotten over the years from various civic organizations and whatnot. Did it originally come with a chicken on the top or was no. it a joke after? No, that was something we put in after. <laughs> and this is all early packaging, stuff like that, yeah. And, uh, you know, the two symbols here. Also, Mr. Okura is involved in a lot of Route 66 events and he's done so over the years. Uh, parades, um, occasional charities, things like that. And uh, he also owns a town on Old Route 66 called Amboy, which uh, we have a se section for over here. These are like his first receipts for the day. Yeah. Chicken towns. This all pertains to those city of Amboy, which is on Old Route 66, three yeah, hours away-ish, here. Albert owns the town, and uh, these are all things, some of these things are things you find in the area, things that belong to the previous family that owned them. Buster and Bats, Buster. Buster was the self-appointed mayor for years, and that was Betty. Betty's family owned the town, and that's those are Betty's credentials. She was the sheriff there. Wow. Was it when there was a population of 20 people? Oh, uh, a little more so. <laughs> yeah. Amboy was one of those busy little towns along the old route. Well, thank you.
thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day. Adventure! Good adventure! <laughs>